Welcome to Stuff and Things. My name's Chase. And I'm Jess. And this is our podcast where we talk about the random stuff and things that influence our lives and our business and just generally just, I guess, life in general yeah. and other things that we're interested in. Um, welcome to episode six, where we're going to talk today about working with your spouse. Yes. And maybe, you know, last time we said that it would be less than 50 minutes and then it wasn't. Sorry about that. <laughs> Maybe we'll try this time. We'll we'll try real hard. No guarantees. <laughs> but um, yeah, this is actually the uh, fourth or fifth take that we've taken for this intro. Um, Jess was kind of in the giggles there for a second. <laughs> well, I was trying really hard to get serious and that was making it worse. So then I just couldn't stop laughing. Because I was thinking about seriousness and it was not helping. And you're like the least serious person that I think I know. I'm, I can be serious. Yeah. No, no seriousness. Sometimes. <laughs> but I think it's fitting to talk about working with your spouse when we are actively trying to record a podcast and having issues with it and trying to figure things out in that regard. Um, but yeah, I think it's a lot of fun to, to work together. And um, we kind of want to explore today just the... The pros and some little cons or challenges that we've encountered while working I together. I would say more challenges than cons. Yeah, because really there aren't any real cons that I can think of. Um, I mean, we got to spend a ton of time together, which is super fun. Super fun. But um, just to preface all of this, like we haven't ever really worked together in a, in a true full-time capacity. Um, there was a point in time when... I owned a restaurant with my dad and you waited tables kind of in a part-time capacity for that. I did. Um, just so we could save some money because yes. we didn't want to pay people to do that job. We could just have you do it. Um, and so that was really the only time that we've worked together. Yeah. And that was a long time ago. It was I mean, a very long time 2009, ago. 2009, I want to say. Yeah, 2009. Yeah. So we're talking about 11 years ago. And yeah. So we didn't really have much experience with this until uh, recently. Yeah. So we, we go ahead. talked about it for quite some time. Mm -hmm. Like, what would this look like? We really want to do this. You know, we had, I mean, really for the past two years, we've talked about um, doing something yeah. together, having a business of some sort together. Yeah. And that kind of led up in our, in our first episode and our story about us up until now. Yeah. Um, we had kind of talked about up until that 2018 time period. Yeah. And so we, in 2018, we kind of decided we wanted to do something that would bring us closer together. Yeah. Um, and we didn't really have any idea what that was, but we just knew that we wanted to work together in some mm -hmm. capacity. We had done this book Mm, can't remember the name of it right now, but there was this book that was suggested to us. I don't even remember. Wow. I'm like foggy <laughs> on all the details, except for there was a book that was basically like a vision quest. I like calling that that it's not actually that. Um, it we'll link the actual book in the, in the show notes yes. when we get to it. But, but yeah, so basically it was um, just walking through like what are the goals that you have for this year <laughs> sorry my mic again for this year for the next couple of years apologize for the the, the boinging noise that you hear in the podcast it just keeps knocking your mic every now and then and it translates really well into the sound and, and <laughs> I'm sure you remember Chase's small video on Instagram about why we can't have nice things. Anyway, <laughs> this is the new fancy mic that she got because of the result of her breaking her last it's one because of me. Um, but anyways, yeah, so we we got this book, the the Vision Quest book, mm -hmm. we'll call it. We like the word Vision Quest because it reminds us of the movie Us when she yes. went on a Vision Quest and found her doppelganger and it was yes. terrifyingly horrifying. Yes. Not to give any spoilers out in that movie if you haven't yes, seen it. You should. But um, but yeah, we took this book on vacation with us when we went to Myrtle Beach. Mm -hmm. And we sat down and it just kind of outlined like your goals for the year, yep. for your life together, individual goals, mm -hmm. um, business goals, personal goals, things like that. And it was just kind of a way to really open up a lot of communication with each other yeah. and be able to um, really kind of share those ideas in open, like an open setting and yeah. also be able to actually write them down, mm -hmm. which I think really helps us out a lot. Um, when we, sure. when we look at what we want to do and then we actually write it down and set maybe like a timeline or set a goal for that and are able to actually have then like, like checkpoints almost that yeah. we can do. Yeah. But so this was kind of that checkpoint for us. Yeah. It was definitely, um, helpful to be able to, 
just really like work through some things personally, like goal wise or together goal wise. Like, I don't know, it's one thing to say it, but then when you put pen to paper and you write it down and it's a reasonable goal and you have steps to get there, like this book was even like, okay, for this month, what are you going to be doing? Yeah. And while we maybe didn't exactly do that at that point, part of that was because we just really didn't know. We knew we wanted the business together. Mm-hmm. We just didn't know what it was going to be yet. Um, yeah. But the main had, reason that we had that goal, though, is because we just wanted to get out of like the rat race and yeah. we were really sick of just being apart from each other. Mm-hmm. Um, we're like, we, we are each other's best friends and it's true. we love spending time together. And because of that, when we're apart from each other, whether it's like when I was working a normal job and mm-hmm. you were working a job or when you were home and I was working, like we always had that, like just heartache yeah. of like just missing each other. And we always just wanted to, get more time together Mm -hmm. and it always felt like you know three day weekends weren't long enough or your vacation is never long enough because we were never able to spend enough time together yeah and so when we had this vision quest book we were able to really sit down and be like okay well what is going to be attainable and what is reasonable and how can we build our relationship Mm -hmm. through doing something together yeah and we landed on starting a business together to have something that paid us to spend time together. Exactly. And, you know, we had like, we talked about it being a book podcast. Ha, huh, funny enough. A YouTube um, channel. YouTube channel. <laughs> huh, funny enough. We had just talked about all of these things and what we wanted it to look like. And we knew regardless of what it looked like, we wanted to use our story and our lives, things we've gone through, our abilities and talents to help others and yeah help others and serve others yeah and in turn be able to like i said build that deeper connection in our relationship Mm -hmm. um so we were just mulling over ideas and trying to figure out what that looked like and then the photography business kind of came to fruition yeah um which was great like it it just kind of landed in our laps as far as like okay like yeah god this is this is a great plan. Like that we can actually do this. We're really good at, you know, the craft of photography Mm -hmm. and we are able to, you know, build a clientele base and try to work forward to it. And, and I think that it was really a good push for us then to actually take that leap and, and start working together, Mm -hmm. which again, we hadn't ever done or experienced (laughs) before and didn't really know what it was going to look like, um, in the long haul. Um, but we, like I said, just knew that we wanted to spend more time together Mm -hmm. and wanted to, just build something that was a better life for us and our family yeah. and be able to, um, you know, kind of just do what we wanted to do in regard of like what makes us money um, and what pays the bills yeah. and not be tied down to, to something that kept us here. Yeah. Because for me, like my job was always very demanding very for time wise yes and so like i we it was hard for us to get vacations or hard for Mm -hmm. us to like get away because i was working 60 hours a week and we hated it it was awful i mean truly like just feeling like well this pat like the past couple years were better i would say so because you moved to a closer dealership and like it was so much better Mm because There was like and before that he was driving an hour both ways to a 12 hour a day, 10 hour a day job. Yeah. So you can do the math. There was very little home time. It sucked. It was awful. And then, you know, days off were not necessarily Together. normal days. Yeah. And so it was a lot and it was really hard. And I mean. Honestly, it felt a little like being a single mom, not because you intended that or that you weren't present when you were home, but it was just because you were (laughs) so busy. Yeah. And, you know, it made it hard to get together with friends. It made it hard to do anything, really. And so I think that was part of it where we were like, we're done with this. And it led to a lot of not being satisfied. Oh, yeah. And so, like, for me, like, I was working a ton. It was making enough to scrape by. And so like it didn't really like the time didn't justify the pay. No. And so for me, it was just like never being satisfied enough with our home life or being able to feel like I was able to be present because I was off like in the middle of the week, like for the first 
four years, my days off were like Tuesday and Wednesday. Yeah. And so like that sucked. I mean, and, it was fine before the kids were in school, mm-hmm. but, but then... with sports and with yeah. just activities and, and things like that, just with the kids growing up, it was, I was really missing out on a lot. Mm-hmm. And that was really hard on us and hard on our kids too, because yeah. they missed us. I mean, like they wanted me to be home and I wanted to be here. And so the only like logical thing to do then is to start something mm-hmm. and to work for myself and to work hard to, you know, build our own little empire or whatever yes. you want to call it <laughs> i mean because ultimately that's what it is like we're we're making money for ourselves yeah you know i'm in charge of what we we do and how how we you know present ourselves to the world how we market ourselves like for it, sure it's it's a lot um yeah. you know to to run your own business but it's also really freeing because you're like this is this it's is completely ours. within our well i mean our control god's control yeah. ultimately but it's within our own control to like set our hours, set our, uh, you know, photo shoots, set the time that we're working at home. And, you know, that's something we've been really cognizant of in starting a business, because I'm sure for those of you who even are working at home right now, you know how hard it is to separate yeah. and to say like, OK, this is when I shut down and I'm done. So we really do try to like set hours Stay within our working hours so to speak and that's hard like, it is really hard i mean we get to the point where we get really excited about a photo shoot or like mm-hmm. i mean even tonight we did it like we had, a, we had an awesome engagement shoot this evening or afternoon and we got home and it i mean we let him sit in our cameras for a little bit but before we started this podcast i needed to you know clear up memory card space and things like that so we put them on the computer and mm-hmm. we're immediately like looking at them and be like oh these are great this one's good like this one's fun and like we were back into work mode yeah. on a sunday and so i think that that's a really the biggest issue for us as far as working on our own is that that turning off yes. you know we we try to set those hours of you know working monday through friday from mm-hmm. you know nine to four or whatever nine to five except for when we have a shoot or whatever but yeah. that way it gives us time to focus on our family focus on each other mm-hmm. and to spend time together doing yeah. fun things like this like Absolutely. recording a podcast because i mean you know this is fun it's not it's totally fun. It's not a business. It doesn't make us any money. It doesn't Zero money. <laughs> like it doesn't do anything of that regard. And that's totally awesome because yeah. it's just something for us to do creatively that we get to, you know, quote unquote, work together, um, you know, in a, yeah, in a kind of creative true. field mm-hmm. and have, you know, mutual responsibility and like creating this. Yeah. But, you but know, it, it's not it's not work. No, it feels more like a conversation. Yeah. Which I. Hope our like as we enjoy. call it a connect night. Like we mm-hmm. like to do nights where we just connect. unplug and connect. Yeah, and, and it's kind of hard to unplug when you have you know two cameras in your face and lights and microphones and things like that. But that's valid. But it's a but fun. I mean, it's a fun opportunity for us to sit down and talk about things that we maybe necessarily wouldn't bring I'm, up casually. I meant more so like our regular connect nights. That's true. We try to like. Yeah. So in our time away from work, Mm -hmm. we do try to kind of have some sort of a schedule. Sometimes it doesn't always work out. Hardly ever works out of like what we do. (laughs) Pretty much never works out. (laughs) Of what we try to do each night that kind of allows us to not just sit down and veg out in front of TV. Because we found that when we didn't have that, we do have that tendency because the days are long and it's you're exhausted by the time you finally get kids in bed. So you're just like, oh. Let's just watch a show. Yeah. And that's an easy trap to fall into, that complacency. Yeah. Um, of just like you go to work, you work all day, you come home, you make dinner for your kids, you hang out with your kids for a little bit, mm-hmm. you put them down, and then then what? Right? Yeah. Like you're tired, you're worn out because we're old and mm-hmm. we want to like you know, we don't have the energy we used to. And yeah. so then with that way, you're like kind of fall into that trap of just, well, let's just turn on a TV show or yeah. let's just watch a movie and or think, let's watch videos on YouTube. And then it's I 11 mean, o'clock and we fall asleep. I love YouTube videos. So. I do too. But I feel like, you know, it really became apparent for me when we would like hang out with other people and they'd be like, so what's new guys? And I'd be like, we started a new show. Oh, <laughs> like, and that was it. Like, not that that's a bad thing. Like, no, because there's some fantastic TV shows yes, out there. But, and they do help spark some conversation with people sometimes but, yeah for sure but, but so we try to vary it and yeah. we try to like set ourselves up to have one or two nights a week where we watch tv mm-hmm. and then we'll like 
you know, we do this on Saturday evenings yeah. and, you know, we record the podcast. So that's a night. And then we try to, you know, play a game together or like have a date night. We got this new book called The Adventure Challenge. It's really fun. It's super awesome. I'll link it in the store in the show notes for you guys. But it's basically like a scratch off activity book. And yeah. it's got like 50 date ideas in it. Mm-hmm. You do one a week. Um, it basically is a whole year of dates. But like the rule is once you scratch it off, you, like, you have, you to, have do to do it. it. And it has all like these stipulations of like this one is for, uh, travel or this one you need a babysitter for. Yeah. So like it it's lays it out super nice. nice. You know before you scratch off what you're getting into to a degree. Like yeah. you know you're going to be at home or not. Yeah. Or you know you're going to need a babysitter or not. So you could plan out like. I need to save this one for a day that we already have planned to have a babysitter or we can do this. Yeah, right but now. it breaks you out of that normalcy, right? And yes. it gets you into that kind of spontaneity of like a date night. Yeah. And it makes it so you can be like, okay, well, you have no idea what we're going to do, but we know we're going to do something together. Absolutely. And it also gets you out of that like, well, what do you want to do tonight? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Well, what do you want to do? <laughs> I don't know. Let's yeah. just watch TV. But it also has um, a camera that came with it, which we obviously enjoyed. But it's this really sweet, Polaroid-esque camera. So yeah, an it's an Insta camera. camera, but it has like all these lenses and filters and it's really fun. It's super fun for our, our techie nerdy like yes. outlook on things. Yes. But yeah. So anyways, like working together though, I mean, the pros of it are pretty clear. I think to us, like uh-huh. we could spend a lot of time together, um, which some people may be like, well, that's a con. But <laughs> like, like for us, we we love it. And it was made really apparent to us in this whole quarantine lockdown phase I when we were able to, um, you know, like actually spend that time together without any distraction. Yeah. So like starting in March, when the world shut down, we were able to just really spend a lot of time together. And, and we, it was the best. We realized we wouldn't kill each other. And, you know, we were realized I that. I think I already knew that. Yeah. But we realized that we could actually spend every day together and not be bored and not be bored of each other, but also like have fun doing it. Yeah. And so for us, that was another big push to starting this business. It was like, we can do this. Like mm-hmm. we can be together all the time. And, and so then have so much fun. Yeah. And so then throwing the business into it, like, I think that we are able to really feed off each other and really yeah. kind of work together in that aspect of like, you know, we, we share ideas, we share opinions mm-hmm. of what we should do. Um, you know, for you, you're always learning and always growing as a photographer and but as, as, a, you. as a businesswoman yeah. too. Um, you know, I think that that's something that you hadn't ever really experienced no. before was being in charge of like the logistics and the day to day of the business. No. And, you know, so I had experience with it, with running the restaurant, but also like management roles and things like that. For sure. Um, but just being able to kind of dive in and do whatever I want with that is mm-hmm. pretty awesome. Um, but like, yeah, I think it's great though for me to be able to have a partner in that mm-hmm. and to be able to be like, okay, I have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah. I have no clue how to market this or how to <laughs> like, you know, gain traction in this. And like, yeah. what do you think about these ideas? And then having you be able to tell me what you think or having you, you know, be there to, affirm me in Mm -hmm. in that idea is is awesome yeah it's been really fun um you know i think something that's super helpful as well is like there's so many times that we've maybe been learning something about like a photo shoot right like Mm -hmm. we just watched a video yesterday about or maybe it was this morning i don't remember but it was like some just better ideas for loosening up families because mm-hmm. we all know it is aqua taco yeah to be at a family shoot and like feel like you have to be all stiff and weird so we wanted to get people out of that because we prefer candid photography yeah anyway long story short the lady in the film was, or the video. video was talking about how oh, what do you do when you're like taking pictures of just the kids? Like, how do you keep people engaged? And I was like, we don't even have to worry about this. Yeah, because we, we have both, the two of us here. Yeah, we always both go to the photo shoot together. Yeah. So we're a team in that. Yeah. And I think that's the next pro is that we have a teammate. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if I was doing this on my own, I think it'd be a lot more challenging. Yeah. Because I wouldn't have you there to to do that, right? To, to wrangle to, children. To wrangle children <laughs> or to, to when my ideas are running out or yeah. when like I feel stuck in something for you to come along and like 
pick me up and be like, yeah. let's do this. And like for you to bring your own ideas to that, like is awesome. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of photographers kind of miss out on that in the sense that it's all on them. Mm -hmm. And so for us, we're always working together. We're always in that space together. Yeah. And it's super fun to be able to like just bounce ideas off each other. It is. I mean, we did that tonight. Like yeah, for we sure. were walking down the path together with the couple in front of us and we're like, oh, let's do this next. Or how about this? Or like, let's do this. Like, yeah. I really want to get this shot or this shot. And like, yeah. we built this like list in our head of like what we wanted to do. And it was awesome because then we could just roll with it. It makes and it a lot more fluid. For absolutely. Sure. And so that's a great like, I guess a way to get over those hurdles mm -hmm. is to have that partner with me. And, yeah. you know, I don't think that that's ever something that I've ever had in like any job I've had. Like, it's always been just me. Yeah. You know, whether it was when I was a police officer, like that's alone, like in the yeah. strictest sense of it. Or, you know, like when I was, you know, in the car industry, like it was all on me. Sure. Like I didn't have anybody to help me because no one wants to help you when you're in a commission job. No. Like they want their commission. They don't want to help you get more yeah. money. And so no one cares about you. No one cares about helping you. But like this is so vastly different mm -hmm. and it's so refreshing because I get to work with my best friend every day. It's pretty awesome. It's pretty much the best thing ever. Yeah. And so I really enjoy like bouncing those ideas off of you. And even when it comes to like editing pictures, like there's like the most monotonous of things being able to be yeah. like, hey, Jess, like, what do you think about this? Like, mm -hmm. how can this be better? And for you to be able to critique it and for me to be like, yeah, I can see that because mm -hmm. I respect and value your opinion. Yes. And I think a lot of this stems down to like we're friends like yeah we're we're best friends we're really close in our relationship and so we've we've breached a lot of those like gaps and those hurdles for sure i mean because i think that there and there have even been times within us working together where maybe one of us has not said something in the kindest way to like <laughs> it's usually me <laughs> <laughs> yes. but just like that like you're trying to give good advice and I'm guilty of it as well. Like you're trying to give good advice, but sometimes like, you know, it doesn't always get like we don't always treat each other perfectly. <laughs> Shocker. Yeah, guys, we're human. Um, But just in that, like not only do you learn to communicate as business partners mm -hmm. and how to better like critique things or help your business partner grow in a positive way, but I think it also helps us in our communication in our marriage because we're learning how to talk about hard things. Like, yeah. like if you're like, okay, here's what you need to do next time to like fix this issue that you had going on with your camera focus or whatever yeah. it is. But, um, yeah, I feel like those are things that translate well, right? Like, you're not just learning how to critique a business partner. You're also learning how to communicate hard things in marriage. Yeah. And I think that's really an awesome pro on each side is that learning curve. And yes, it's a learning curve because it's learning to speak kindly to one another. And we've had to learn things. that pretty quickly too. Like, yeah. like you said, with critiquing and things of that sort, like it's just a matter of how we communicate it. Yes. Our, the tone in our voice, the way we approach it, the way we mm -hmm. communicate that. And it's not always easy because I feel like sometimes, you know, you'll, you'll come to me for advice or something like that. And I feel like I'll try to give you advice and maybe you're not hearing what I'm saying, or maybe I'm not seeing that you're not hearing me or whatever, or maybe I'm not communicating it properly or, or well enough, but mm -hmm. you know, then there's, there's a disconnect and there's that yeah. like, well now, like she asked me for help and now she's not taking my advice. And so therefore like, I need to like tell her how to do it. Yes. And, and that's not the best way by any means. And you no. know, we, it usually ends up with us like being like, well, fine. Like I'm just going to do it how I want to, and I'm just going to be fine. And like, we, you know, we butt heads in that sense creatively, I think, because it is like our business is very artistic. Mm -hmm. And so like for us to fall into being like, well, you should have composed that frame better, or you should have posed them this way instead of this way like it, it 
it's almost infringing upon our like artistic view of that, yeah. that photo. Um, but when it comes to like a technical side of things of like, okay, yeah. this is the schedule we have for posting these podcasts, or this is the schedule we have for our photo shoots this week. Yeah. And like it not being in line with what maybe you think or what I think, or, you know, or if we or fall just off of that schedule. Or mishearing each other. Like, yeah. Miscommunication, yeah. I think yeah. is, is a big one. It's a big one. <laughs> and it's, it's just a matter of learning to, to reconcile that. And just like you said, like it helps a lot with being able to, um, you know, reconcile differences in, in just your marriage in general. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's a huge thing to be able to come to those terms of like, you know, I'm not always right. And I'm not, (laughs) I'm not always communicating the best way, or I'm not always Mm -hmm. translating what I'm thinking into words the proper way. Yeah. And for me to be able to recognize that and then, bridge that gap and be able to really communicate effectively for sure is huge. It is huge. I mean, and it takes time. It takes practice and it's sometimes hard because like you said, it is art or whatever. And so it's, it is sometimes so subjective that like what I may see as like, Hey, let's try this instead. You may be like, no, I want it that way. Yeah, absolutely. Which I don't really find that we have a whole lot of that within our creative vision. Like I think we're we're pretty tight in that. Pretty tight in that. It's more so like when it comes to helping one another with something. Yeah. And maybe not saying it the nicest way sometimes. Yeah. Well, I think that's a good place for a quick break. Yeah. Um, And when we get back from the break, we will talk more about the challenges and how we are overcoming some of those challenges in working together in a creative yeah. field and also and just kind of already started in a self-employed. So yeah. So I think we'll dive a little bit deeper in that when we get back from our right. quick break. All right. And welcome back after that short break. Um, so yeah, we just want to kind of collect our thoughts a little bit about how we want to talk about challenges and communicate them effectively to uh, you guys. So that we are also working on our effective communication on our side. Yes. Also, we have to apologize. This is probably not going to be a short podcast again. So we're just going to stop saying that. It's yep. not a short podcast. Don't expect it to be. And when it ends up being a short one, then we'll be like, hey, surprise, it's only 20 minutes this time. <laughs> um, but um, so like I, like we were talking about just before the break, like just effective communication, I think, is one of the, the first issues that we've kind of run into mm-hmm. um, and rather a lack of effective communication and so when it's like well i'm i started this thing or i started like this um you know this new program or something like that for our business and i had told you about it or maybe i didn't tell you in the strictest of terms but you you didn't hear what it was and so then you're like well i don't i didn't hear that or i didn't know that you were Mm -hmm. doing that and so then it becomes a like well, I told you. Yes. <laughs> and, and so just learning to communicate in that realm of being like sharing everything, making sure everybody's together. Yeah. And I think it's made even more difficult because you're not full time with it yet. Yeah. I think that has been a huge challenge. <laughs> I've, I've had a few challenges to overcome, but it's fine. Um, that's been a huge challenge for me. Just feeling like I'm missing out on stuff or mm-hmm. like that there are things that I'm not really totally able to help with completely yet and that bums me out because i want to i don't want it to fall all on you or i don't want certain things to have to be completely on you and so that's been a challenge for me because i do feel like like that fomo right like fear of missing out but i I feel like for you more (laughs) so it's like a fear of not helping enough that is valid because that checks out you know (laughs) Early on, we we kind of had a disagreement where it was like, I need your help. Like, I need you to do some more stuff. I need you to pick up some of the business side of things. And I felt like there was a disconnect of like, all you're doing is showing up for the glamorous parts of like taking the pictures and like having the fun with our clients and getting to enjoy that time with them. And then it's like, okay, and here's my thousand pictures that I took. Like, go ahead and edit all those pictures yeah. and deliver them to the clients. And that was hard for me to overcome because it felt like a lot of it fell on my shoulders, but at the same token, like I'm the one who's doing this full time and I'm the one that's here. And so like, it makes sense that I'm the one who's picking up a little more of it than what you're doing because you're still working full time. Like spinning so many plates. 
Let's yeah, be honest. You really are. I mean, between between working in the education system here to like picking up every volunteer thing that we possibly can at our church. Always. Like, you know, so you're running Bible studies and we're doing youth group stuff and we're trying to do whatever we can as far as service projects or whatever it is. Like we do a lot and it's really kind of weighs on us and then we're like surprised to start a business like on top of all of it like oh, and, i know just you're not doing enough right now so let's do I'm more in my master's program you're also in your master's and, program <laughs> so. add all of these things together and you've got just spinning a whole lot of plates but yeah. it's fine i feel like i'm fine yeah I'm fine guys i'm fine <laughs> she's juggling them really well but so that was a hard hurdle for me to overcome of like you know, we started this business together, but like for right now, it's it's yes. strictly me that's full time. And so being like, well, I do need to do these things. And I know that you've missed out on a lot of that and you've you've wanted to help. Absolutely. You know, whether yeah. it's, you know, like the posts on Instagram and Facebook or like working on our marketing stuff, like, yeah. you know, figuring like just trying to figure out how in the world Facebook advertising works. Yeah, it's like. A, it's a, like Still, still haven't got it. Like It's like those math problems where it's like if Sean is on a train going 55 miles an hour and Jasmine is in a car going 27, how many pizzas does Bob have? And like find the square root of coconut. Yes. Like, yeah. And you're like, well, I, I don't have enough information. It's, it's sure. horrible. <laughs> and so it's like, I feel like that's been hard for me, too, because like I am trying to figure all this out yeah. on my own and trying to you know, like build a website and like figure out how in the world, like to write a blog post yeah. and like all these like little things that I feel like just keep stacking up and keep building yes, up and keep sure. growing. And I'm like, okay, like I understand like being a, a self-employed businessman, like I am a CEO and a CFO mm -hmm. and a you know, CMO. Exactly. Like, I, I'm yeah. everything like advertising, marketing, like I am branding, like I'm yeah. all of it. And then on top of that, like we're also like the like foot soldiers, right? Like we are yes. the people taking the pictures and then like I'm an editor and it's like, it's just a lot. And so like, I cannot wait until you're home Yes. because then I can be like, okay, like these are your tasks. Like yeah, you get to do sure. these things and I'll do these things. Or like you edit this gallery and I'll edit this gallery. Like, and don't get me like, I really love editing pictures. Oh, me too. I really love all that side of things too. So it really does bum me out that I don't get me as much. Yeah. But part. like, you know, this week staring down, like we have like 4,000 pictures that we need to edit from this weekend. Yeah. Like, it's a lot it and a like lot. I want to have them done by Wednesday because on top of it all, we're trying to like shoot a short film this week because why not? <laughs> like why not just keep why stacking not? things on top of it? Like, you know, we just like to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, so look forward to that. We're going to, we'll post that short film on our uh, YouTube. If it's if, good. No, it's, we're, Jess is acting. It's going to be great. It's going to be something. <laughs> we're we're going to make a, a short horror film and it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really excited, um, actually. Yeah, it was a little challenge that was put out by someone we follow on Instagram. And so we want to do it because, like I said in a previous episode, I've really kind of fallen in with filmmaking and mm -hmm. fall in love with it and just want to dive in. And we have all yeah. the stuff and all the ability and we have some really good, fun, creative ideas. Yeah, I'm really excited. And so I think that working together on that mm -hmm. is also going to be fun. Like, you know, that's a whole different realm of things, yes. right? Like, okay, I have this idea and this vision and this like script in my brain. Now, Jess, I need you to uphold this. Yes. <laughs> like, I but need not you even to do that. this. Then we like tweaked it together yeah. and I helped you with script writing and yeah. we're going to both be filming because we both have to act. Yeah. Ooh, it's Chase's just, acting debut. It's a bunch of fun. So I'm really, <laughs> I'm really excited about it. But I think the long and short of it really is that like working together, it's not it's not all sunshine and rainbows like no you know working in a in a creative field especially like mm -hmm. it's not all glamorous like there's a lot of things that are not fun like yeah. taxes <laughs> or like the fact that we <laughs> didn't realize that we needed to file like a sales tax report even though we didn't have any taxable yeah, like, that sales was fun. so like it's like okay we have to figure that out and so it's just like one of those other things that we have to do you know and it's just like one of those unglamorous things that like i have to put on my task list every month to make sure that i do yep. but like you know you see all these people who are self-employed or you see these people on instagram who are influencers who are you know like living that glamorous yes, life but yes. like you don't see the like Hard work the that, work goes, that in. goes into yeah. it and the unglamorous side of things. And we talked about that in the not comparing yourself video, the, you know, finding your voice in the noise. Yeah. Like it's a highlight reel. And truly like, it is. And like they don't 
Like, I think that's the thing we were talking about is people don't see how much work goes in either. Mm -hmm. Like they see the final result of this really cool, like vlog from your trip to Bali, but they don't know that we've done that guys. Sorry to break it to you. (laughs) Not yet. (laughs) But they see all of that. And then they're like, oh, these people are just having fun. That's their job. They have fun. Well, no. I mean, there's a lot of un. it's fun. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of fun. But But they don't see the like the self-doubt and the like issues to overcome of like, I'm not good enough to do this. Or, you know, like I had this big vlog planned out for this weekend. Yeah. Like, you know, I've, I've been working on you know, my back piece, my tattoo on my back. Mm -hmm. And I've been working on that for a year. And we had this great idea of like doing a video about like completing things about like perseverance and endurance and like the end result of like feeling accomplished in something and using it in a fun way of like, Hey, I finished my tattoo. Like it's cool and fun and exciting. But like, I just was feeling kind of overwhelmed and busy that day because we had a photo shoot at three, my tattoo appointment was at four. The so photo shoot late. ended at four. <laughs> so it was like, you know, we we had all this like stuff just stacked up on top of yeah. each other. And our business always comes first. Like in that regard of like, yeah, of like fun, fun versus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so like, you know, the tattoo appointment took a little bit of a back burner and took a little bit of a later time. And then it was like, well, I didn't have enough time before the photo shoot to like mm-hmm. start this vlog. And it was just like it snowballed. And then at yeah. the end of it, I was like. I'm just feeling kind of defeated and like, I don't even want to do this anymore. And so there's a lot of that, like self comparison in our business life and, and, and together, like the ideas of like, how can we be better in this realm together? Yeah. Like how can we grow this business together? For sure. And what things can we do that maybe we're not doing or what are we doing? That's not working. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a hard thing of like trying to learn together of how to do that. Yeah. But we're on the journey together, like we said before, and that is a pro because even though it isn't all sunshine and rainbows, and even though we do have things that we have to work through to figure out what works and what doesn't like, we have a partner in it and that's pretty awesome. It's not just on you to figure out, or it's not just on me to figure out like, we have the beauty of two brains figuring things out, which is pretty awesome. It's fantastic. Like it's a, a great opportunity for us to learn each other's strengths and mm-hmm. each other's weaknesses because we definitely both have them in this. Oh yeah. Um, and being able to build each other up. Like mm-hmm. it's awesome. And it's, it is. It was challenging too. It is very challenging. And so like just some of the challenges come in like big decisions, you know, of like, <laughs> like what, what do we need to do yeah. to like try to garner some more business or what do we need to do to like pull back a little bit and have more family time? Yeah. Like, or like what kind of gear do we need to buy next? Or yeah, I feel like there are so many big decisions within the early days of starting a business. Totally. Because like, yeah, just like marketing platforms or like you said, like new camera equipment, like, you know, we're, we're starting to book some weddings and things like that, mm-hmm. that we're going to need secondary cameras for. And like, it's like, well, do we buy, the cheaper one or do we buy the more expensive one that we're going to live with for longer? Like, yeah. what do we do in this realm? Like, do we just bank this money instead? Like yeah. and save it for a rainy day or like, how do we go about doing this? And like, there's a lot of the financial decisions I think are like the big decisions yes. for us. And those financial decisions <sighs> have always been challenging hard for ones us? for us, whether it yeah. before it was a business, like before, you know, we got into like running the finances mm-hmm. of a business, like running the finances of our home is hard <laughs> enough. Like, yes, especially it took us some years to figure that out, <laughs> especially before you <laughs> you were working. Yes. And we had was, a, a one income family of With five three children. You know, and, I mean, yes. that was that was hard. It was. I mean, but we made it work. Yeah. And God always provided. Absolutely. And it was awesome. I mean, but I would say, like, for those of you who know us well or maybe don't know us well you may not know this about us we are not the most decisive humans in the world no there's a lot of i don't know what do you think in this house (laughs) like on both sides yes we are and so learning to make decisions yeah it's it's hard but then also learning to be excited when the other one makes a decision Okay. I think that that's that's the bigger side of it is like I'm real happy when you make decisions and I don't I under, have to. I understand <laughs> that you're happy when I make the decision, but the 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 decision that was made, I think, is more okay. so what I'm talking about. Gotcha. Like, you know, if it's like okay, 
I'm deciding that we need to buy this piece of gear. Yeah. And like, and that's, that's what we need to do. Mm -hmm. And, um, if you don't necessarily agree with it, like trying to work through that yeah, or like, you well, know, this is the that... advertising that we're doing. Like, yeah. you know, this is the creative of the ad that I've come up with. Mm -hmm. I need to post it today so we can get the ad running. Mm -hmm. Like, and just you being okay with that decision. Yeah. Like that's a hard one for you, I think, because it's that fear of missing out. Right. Like a little bit. You're yeah. not like involved in it you're not yeah working with me in it but you know that needs to be done and i think i'm getting there like i'm definitely letting go of that a little more and realizing that like it's a bummer but it's reality and yeah. it's not forever it's a season yeah and that's okay and, and like, i'm just like working like heck to get you home yeah. like that's that's my end goal at this point in time like the sooner i can make it so that you can be here full time like man the better it's gonna be like <laughs> i can't wait for that day that like you get to be here yeah and you know like you you love your job now and it's not I like do. it's not I like you're trying to escape some crappy job no my job is like, pretty amazing i have great co-workers yeah, you have, yeah you have an awesome job and there's no reason for you to Super necessarily rewarding. leave besides like <laughs> just being here with me like, i mean that's, that's a, a pretty, good reason it's a pretty big pull <laughs> um i will say i think the other thing that's hard for us you talked about like financial decisions and i know like for me i think even more so than fear of missing out because i feel like i'm i really am letting that go a bit more because i have to mm -hmm. um I think we struggle sometimes with those financial decisions because we are very different spenders yeah, I'm the one who's like, I'm going to buy this out of convenience because I don't have to go to a bunch of different stores. If I have to spend a little bit more money on it, like I'm not going to search for the best deal. Whereas you're like, I will I'm going to go shopping for 10 hours and not buy anything. Yeah. Like you'll search and search and search for and the best I'm deal. I'm not a spender really. Like no. I would prefer to not make huge purchases wow words which is really hard when it comes to photography yes because, because everything is everything's purchase. expensive i mean yes. you want to buy a new lens it's a thousand dollars you want to buy a yeah. new camera it's three thousand dollars you want to buy like whatever yeah. it is like you know you buy a new pc it's two thousand dollars like yeah everything is expensive and it all has its pros and cons and it all has For its sure. like rewards and like shortcomings and and we'll talk and about that in a later yeah. episode where we talk about camera gear for a whole yeah. episode so be prepared for that guys <laughs> yes it's gonna be really fun i think something that we have learned in those decisions is taking our time doing the research together mm -hmm. reading even renting the gear that we're thinking about to try it out before we totally commit. Like, I think we've been really wise in those mm -hmm. decisions and we are learning how to make those together. It's just taken time. But I think the best thing for me to kind of um, like ease your worry in that is to be able to tell you all those things like to say i've looked into this i've researched this these are the pros about this mm -hmm. this is the reason why we should have this item or the reason why we should buy this program or yeah like, i've looked at these other five options and this one stacks up the best yeah and being able to justify that to you in, in that sense mm -hmm. so that you can work your brain around it of like okay this is a good expenditure yes. not necessarily like justifying like hey i want this new shiny camera like you should really <laughs> let me get this thing it's really super cool look at all the stuff it does like no it's not anything like that. It's more so like Chase, this is going to chase an everyday real life. <laughs> this is going to benefit our business <laughs> and X, Y, and Z. And yeah. these are the reasons why we should do this or why we shouldn't do yeah, this. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's been the harder thing for me is just saying no. Yes. Because like I'm like a, a techie gear guy. Like, yes, you are. And I saw something the other day that said like, you know, you buy a new piece of gear and like it only stems you wanting to buy more gear. Like yes. there's like there's like an exponential curve, right? Of like the more money you spend on gear, like the more gear you want to buy. Well, and, and it's, it's bad. We talked about a little that you go hard in everything. I do. Yeah. And so this is one of those areas where you want the best that we can afford at the time. Yeah. Like, well, like we're doing this short film and I was like, I really should buy a cinema camera. <laughs> Like, we because, don't need a cinema camera because like it does all these better things than what I have. And like talking myself off that cliff, right. Of like, <laughs> no, don't chase. worry. We're not buying a cinema camera. No, you don't need that. No, like, you, you're perfectly adequate with what you have. Yes. But I, I think that like, you know, the biggest takeaway from this, I think for us is just learning to love your spouse 
in every season, learning to love your spouse in every shortcoming and achievement Mm -hmm. and being able to really grow in those shortcomings and achievements together. Yeah. And like being in a business together and working together has really taught us how to do that effectively Mm -hmm. and efficiently to be able to communicate well, to be able to like debate on something without arguing Mm -hmm. and to be able to critique each other in a healthy way. Yeah. Um, which then carries over into how we love each other, mm-hmm. how we support each other, how we encourage each other in our relationship and our personal life. Yeah, for sure. And so I just want to encourage anybody who's in their marriage who feels like they don't have that connection with their spouse to work on it. Like yeah. to have those hard conversations to stem from like this is my grievance, Mm -hmm. but I want to approach it in love. And I want to approach this situation with you in love so that I can, so that we can work together through this so that I can overcome my shortcomings Mm -hmm. and turn them into achievements for our marriage. Absolutely. I mean, I'm going to say one of my favorite quotes right now. Say it. Um, so Michelle Obama has a fantastic quote and it, it's about marriage is where it comes from. But I feel like it applies to so many things. Um, she's like, you know, you look and you see that the grass is greener. Mm-hmm. Water your own dang grass. Yeah. Like, don't look at the other grass and be like, mm, that grass is greener. That's what I need. I mean, and you can translate that into working with your spouse. Like, oh, they look like they have it so much easier doing it on their own. Like that grass is greener. I need to stop doing this. Yeah. Instead, it's water your own grass, like nurture what you have, care for what you have, grow what you have. And, you know, it's. It's super important. Pretty important thing. And then it helps Absolutely. you grow in so many facets if you apply that principle to like so many things. You yeah. know, if you look Absolutely. at anything that anyone else has and you're coveting it, that's bad news. But well, it's really easy to you, do. Totally. But then if you instead decide to nurture what you have, be thankful for what you have and grow in that space, you're going to reap those rewards for sure. Your marriage is like, yeah, yeah. you're going to come together in all the ways that you want to that are greener on the other side of the fence. You yeah. can make your own yard beautiful. Heck and, yes, you can. And I mean, Take I think that that's, that's the work, <laughs> though. Like it, it takes work. Yeah, like, it does. And it's never not going to be work. And I think that that's the biggest issue is that people just want it to be easy. But mm-hmm. if we just make it work, it's it's worth it. I mean, I can't even tell you how many times I've heard people say like, oh, well, if it's true love, I shouldn't have to work for it. No, yeah, <laughs> that's not it's not, not true. We are not in a Disney princess movie. No. y'all. We are in We've real been life married for almost 13 years. Trust us. It there's takes work. work. <laughs> like, but <laughs> I think that the, the, the takeaway from this episode is just like face the challenges together, mm-hmm. work on the challenges together and, and work hard on them yeah. because in the long run, it's going to be beneficial to both parties. For sure. And you're going to be more in love. You're going to be happier. You're going to be more joy filled mm-hmm. and it's going to be worth it. And it may be hard. It may be messy, but it's going to be worth it. For sure. Um, so we've reached 50 minutes again. Oh, We're sorry, really guys. good at that. <laughs> um, but if you Thanks got, for sticking with us. Yeah. If you got any value out of this, guys, please rate us on the podcast situation that you're listening to, the station mm-hmm. you're listening to. Um, if you're on Apple, be sure to give us a review. Yeah. It really helps us get this message out to other people. If you're watching on YouTube, um, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Um, <laughs> give it a thumbs up and also click that bell so you can get future videos from us. Yes. And also help us to get this message out to other people because we're all about helping people, helping people with their mm-hmm. marriages and their life and their business and creativity and whatever it may be. Yeah. Because that's what we want to do is is serve you guys and just like we serve our clients and serve one another um so until next time i think that uh, we should sign off here so we don't go over too much longer (laughs) and um we'll see you guys on the next episode bye